Uh, I started out as a super affiliate, um, then began managing affiliate programs, um, and then search marketing programs. Um, then in uh, late 2003, I partnered with my best friend, Michael Jones, and um, we founded a full service internet marketing agency. The last three years, we've been one of the fastest growing companies in the United States of America. Uh, last year, we were number 70 uh, in the country on the Inc. 500, uh, the highest, uh, I believe, of, of most companies who do what we do. Um, I published a book last year um, that was the best-selling book on search engine marketing last year by Wiley. If you're interested in taking a look at it um, or buying it, it's on Amazon, uh, among all the bookstores, amazon.com forward slash pepper jam. I actually have three books here, so after the presentation today, the first three people who say, Chris, I want a free book, you get a free book. Hopefully it's those who raised their hand that didn't win anything yet. Um, I'm going to start by introducing our panel. Today's topic is affiliate marketing in 2009. Um, I'm not just saying this, but I am, uh, I had the honor of, of selecting the panel, um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a real honor uh, because I was able to get um, some of my friends, as well as some of some very recognizable figures within this industry, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce them to you now. And then after that, we're going to have a moderated Q&A, and then I'm going to open it up to you guys. There is a microphone um, in the back left here, um, so uh, I'll let you know when, when we're going to go to the audience, and then you can start asking your questions. I'm just going to start with an introduction of Linda Woods, uh, which really doesn't need an introduction. Um, she's known as the affiliate goddess. She's been involved with affiliate marketing practically since its inception, starting in the late 1990s as director of internet marketing for a web design firm. She then moved into a small little startup um, named Commission Junction uh, in 1999. Uh, Linda started her own internet marketing consultancy in 2000. Uh, right around then is probably when her and I became friends. Um, she also did some business development for Cowabunga. Um, technologies and over the years has helped hundreds of other companies, both large and small, start and manage uh, affiliate programs. Um, Partner Centric is the company that uh, she founded back in 2000 as an outsourced affiliate program management service. Um, and uh, she has about 45 clients, including National Geographic, uh, Quicken Loans, AIG, which was formerly 21st Century Auto Insurance, among many others. Uh, she's quoted frequently in, in, in magazines, which you and I read, like Revenue Magazine, among others. Um, she also hosts a weekly podcast on Webmaster Radio um, called Affiliate Marketing Insider. She lives in Santa Barbara, California with her 12-year-old son. She loves to dance, dine, and travel. <laughs> and I did all three of those last night. <laughs> and she did all three of those last night. Uh, I'm going to jump over to... Gary Ackerman. Uh, Gary Ackerman, a uh, friend of mine since, uh, since we were probably teenagers. Uh, Gary and I uh, reconnected a couple of years ago because he just so happens to be the president and CEO of one of the fastest growing and one of the most prominent mobile marketing companies in the United States of America. Um, but he has positioned M3 Mobile Marketing as one of the leaders in mobile marketing. Uh, before he joined M3, uh, Gary held a number of senior level management positions in which he was primarily focused on new business development from large national accounts. He also has experience in exploring and structuring strategic partnerships with media, communications, and affiliate marketing companies. Uh, M3 Mobile Marketing, uh, Gary's company, was the winner of the 2008 CTIA New Star Pioneer Award, uh, is a full service mobile marketing solutions company uh, that is hyper focused on leveraging mobile marketing technology for retailers. You'll learn more about Gary's strategy for how mobile marketing will impact affiliate marketing in 2009. And I'm really excited about the opportunity for him to share that with you. I'm going to move to Brad Wilson. Um, many of you may have seen Brad Wilson um, on any of many major uh, national uh, television networks. Um, I got to see him on the Today Show with Matt Lauer. Uh, but he started out a company called Brad's Deals. Uh, it started out as a way to show his friends and fellow students how to save money using tips and tricks online. Bradsdeals.com has become one of the most popular destinations online for deals, coupon codes, and in-store printable coupons. Uh, as I mentioned, he's appeared on the Today Show, um, also Oprah and Friends, MSNBC. He's been quoted and mentioned in the Wall Street Journal, CNN Money, and USA Today, which is pretty amazing. 
Moving along, uh, Chris Hedgecock, our final panelist, um, is a super affiliate. He has and owns some of the most highly trafficked websites in the United States of America. Uh, he's the CEO and co-founder of a company called Zero Paid. It's a network of highly trafficked sites um, anchored by zeropaid.com. He founded that company in April 2000. Um, it's been featured in the Wall Street Journal, US News and World Report, MSNBC, and many other major media outlets. Uh, Zero Paid and Chris are based in San Diego, home of the San Diego Chargers. Go Chargers. Still run, and the company is still run by the two original founders and a much needed supporting cast. Almost done. While Zero Paid is a big part of Chris's life, he is also very active in entrepreneurial community, having started over 10 companies over the last five years with a few successful exits. He probably doesn't want to talk about those publicly, but in private, you could probably get them to talk Maybe. about them. Three so prior to, on you. <laughs> prior to Zero Paid, uh, Chris worked in the engineering halls of MP3.com and Microsoft. So while not being a geek or serial entrepreneur, which Chris is, he enjoys strapping himself. Should I continue the sentence? Or no? <laughs> strapping himself. <laughs> strapping himself to any kind of board. He's from San Diego, um, and going fast. Socializing, traveling, eating, and drinking also seem to take a large part of the calendar. Did all those last night too. <laughs> so find out more about Chris at NoFun.com. Reason I, I went into the first off, I'm really proud of my panel. Um, number two, I think that this industry doesn't take enough time to celebrate affiliates um, and the people who make this industry great. Uh, my company, Pepper Jam, uh, uh, we've tried to do that and many others have as well, but that's why I took the five or so minutes to, to share the incredible biographies of, of our panelists today. So let's jump right into it because I think each of these uh, individuals have some insight on the state of the economy. Um, its impact on affiliate marketing and also growth opportunities for both affiliates and advertisers. So let's, uh, let's just be honest, right? 2008 represented um, an extraordinary downturn in the economy. Um, many of us in this room thought we were invincible about a year ago at the same time. Uh, affiliate marketing industry was, go was growing. Uh, uh, Google seemed uh, uh, completely omnipotent and uh, everything was just going perfect. And then the economy started to tank. But the question is, is not to focus on a poor economy, but to ask the question, is affiliate marketing better positioned? Is money, despite ad budgets being slashed, is the money moving into affiliate marketing? So my question for the panel to start um, is, you know, what effect will this poor economy have on affiliate marketing? We'll start with Linda. I can make my phone stop ringing. <laughs> um, so there is a lot of opportunity in a, in a down marketplace for affiliate marketing. And uh, based on the experience that we have, I've seen this before and I know Chris has too, one of the big upswings in affiliate marketing happened in the dot bomb phase, which was in 2001, 2002. The reason for that is, um, this is essentially a performance marketing space. So while ad budgets might be going down for major advertisers, they're really looking at, they're pinching their pennies, they're looking at every single dollar that they're spending and saying, is this good for us? Is, are we getting an ROI? But essentially with affiliate marketing, it's free advertising until it produces a sale. So that's a pretty an amazing place for, for advertisers to, to put their money because at least they know whether it's going to work or not. Um, also, the uh, money that a lot of advertisers are spending on uh, Google is astronomical, and they're looking at, is that really, do they need to spend that much money? Can they cut back in any way? Affiliates often provide an opportunity to expand their marketing dollars um, because there are affiliates out there who have done very, very well at optimizing. Uh, primarily because if affiliates are spending money on Google, they have to make sure that they're making money because they're having to use uh, the income from the commissions in order to pay for those ads. So we have a lot of opportunity here in uh, affiliate marketing to grab hold of, uh, of an upswing. We have to be innovative and work a little harder, and I know that some of the questions will be around that. But this is a tremendous year, and if the first 
uh, what is it, the 10th now, 11th? If the first 10 days of this year are any indication, it is going to be some wild ride this year. My phone started ringing on Monday, January 5th like crazy, and it has not stopped. So that is uh, really starting off with a bang, and, and I think we're going to have a, a, an amazing year, actually. Let's jump over to Brad. Brad, what do you think? Is this, is this an opportunity for affiliate marketers? I mean, we hear, we hear that budgets are being slashed. We, we don't only hear it. I see it at Pepper Jam with some of our largest clients. It's sort of a reality. But where's the money going? Is it going on your site, bradsdeals.com? I mean, is this an opportunity for, for, a, for a leading discount coupon site like Brad's Deals? Yeah, I, I certainly think that the overall industry is going to take market share versus other kinds of advertising and marketing. You know, if, if, if anyone's ever seen uh, CNBC on, on a day that the, that the stock market crashes, they, they use the phrase, a flight to quality, where all the money is shifting towards treasury bonds and, and, and safer kind of investments. And I think affiliate marketing is sort of the treasury, treasury bonds of marketing and, and advertising. We're, we're the safer, uh, you know, it's a very safe uh, sort of trusted performance-based option. And, you know, if, if you could run TV commercials or direct mail or, uh, you know, other types of campaigns where you didn't have to pay for anything until you got the performance that you wanted, we'd probably all be doing that. But this is, you know, affiliate marketing is, is, is really that, you know, is the only kind of option like that that exists. And, and I think we're all very well positioned in a downturn to, you know, even if budgets get decreased, to at least take, you know, uh, take a greater share of the overall market. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I think that there's so many great options within the affiliate space for advertisers and marketers in such a safe, guaranteed, performance-based way that, I, you know, I, the, the more downturn, the better, to be honest, because then... Uh, you know, then we can, it, it, it sort of bring, it, it sort of highlights the best parts of what we're all doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, like you said, the last time there was a downturn is sort of when the industry really got its legs. So and I think that's fantastic. So the, 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 the worse, the better, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris, let's just uh, uh, try to get your insight as a super affiliate. Do you believe that, um, let me first ask you, if you don't mind, mind me, um, as a, in terms of your affiliate commissions, are you making more? Do you believe you'll make more in 2009 than you made in 2008? And is that because of additional effort or, 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 or uh, you launching, you know, creating new innovations? Or is it because you believe what Brad and Linda just shared, that this is an opportunity for affiliate marketing? Well, I think it's a combination of all of those. And, and for the record, I start every year thinking I'm going to make more money than the year before. <laughs> as you um, should. As we all should. Um, and, and they're all right saying that, you know, performance-based marketing is going to improve, um, you know, as Brad was saying, with uh, people looking for more ROI from their investments. And uh, like Linda was saying, people are questioning their Google spend. Well, there's a lot of smart people at Google that are always looking for new uh, revenue streams. And I think one of the great things we have to look for is Google moving into the affiliate space and take that as a great indicator of our space growing. And, I mean, in any market, you've got to look for opportunity. And I think in a down market, there's more opportunity than ever. Great. Gary, um, and, and maybe if, if, you, if you can, you know, you being our mobile marketing uh, expert, I know you've spent a lot of time in 2008 mm -hmm. studying and, and learning the affiliate space, but, um, you know, what, what do you think the impact is going to be uh, on affiliate marketing as well as your own industry, uh, mobile marketing? Well, I think, um, I think mobile marketing traditionally um, up until, you know, halfway through 2008 was a transaction-based model with fixed monthly fees and fixed transactions on a per, per thousand basis, on a per message basis. I think what mobile marketing is going to have to do in 2009, you know, through a tricky economic environment, is kind of shift towards what some of the, some of the affiliate marketing, you know, strategies are with the paper performance models. So a lot of mobile marketing companies right now are creating ways through code to to track unique identifying, to um, integrate into point of sale. And re redemption and conversion rates in mobile happen to be a lot higher than that of you know, traditional internet-based marketing just due to the fact that you know, your, your marketing vehicle is on you at all times. And if you're giving a retailer or a merchant the opportunity to be able to market to you via that medium, uh, there's a high probability that you are going to convert. Um, so as mobile marketing companies learn more and more about how to uh, strategize on paper performance marketing efforts, um, I think that retailers, especially as we move forward in, in 09, uh, where budgets are limited in some capacity, will flock towards mobile as it does relate to affiliate. Because I think this is a really important issue. I, I'm going to open up for two questions to the audience. If anyone 
Does anyone have any follow-ups for our panel about the impact of, of the economy uh, on affiliate marketing? Or do, you, or, 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 or do you believe the panel that, in fact, there's more accountability, I, I don't want to put words into your mouths, but there's more accountability in, in, in performance-based uh, affiliate marketing than there is in CPM advertising um, and, and even cost per click for that matter. So is there anyone that has any, any follow-up questions for our panel regarding the economy? Robin? Okay, so um, my name is Robin Jones. I'm with Pepper Jam. Um, currently, I am the Senior Director of Publisher Development. And um, my question is for Brad. Brad, from, um, from a coupon site's point of view, if you have a merchant with, with, with the economy, how it is right now, you know, it, in, it, most merchants look on a site like yours to get, to get um, a higher placement. And typically, how they would go about doing that would be to bargain with we'll give you a higher commission or we'll give you an exclusive code. But right now in the state of the economy, it's not really possible for some merchants to be able to do both of those. So I guess my question to you is for yours, for, for Brad's deals in particular, and for, for the affiliate uh, realm of, of, of coupon codes and coupon sites, which do you feel in 2009 um, is going to, to, to position a merchant on a coupon site better? Uh, Robin, thanks for the question. So as far as we go, as far as Brad's Deals is concerned, we always just want to have the most, be the best resource, have the most interesting content. So we would, without a doubt, uh, go with a better discount than a better business proposition. Um, you know, but to speak further to the question, it's a tough year and budgets are constricted and people may not be able to, to like you said, do both. There's other things they can do. For example, we're very, uh, we're, uh, we're very product specific, sort of hand picked kind of kind of site. So maybe they can look at their entire inventory and find find five products that that, that work to do both. Or uh, you know, just th th there's things that they can do to sort of di you know dig a little deeper and and you know maybe it's not something they could do site wide, but maybe it's some you know maybe maybe a store can offer. Um, you know, uh, maybe maybe there's a category that works more for you know that works better given given the environment that we're in. Um, you know, we obviously understand that that it's a tough time to be a retailer, but I but we're we're still discovering lots of sort of creative, innovative ways that maybe we didn't have to think as deeply as we did in years past. But there's there's always something there, and it's just a question of communicating and and finding something that that does work and is interesting and and, and works for both sides. Do you have any insight there, uh, Linda? I thought that was a great question because um, the advertisers that we manage are uh, definitely asking me that all the time. Look, my margins are shrinking, and these affiliates want um, big commissions, and they want better and better consumer offers. You know, uh, what good is volume if we're not making a profit? So they are asking me that, and so I, I appreciate your question, Robin. Um, to, so to, to, to what degree, if, is there, if there are any more you can add to it, or maybe um, Chris can add to that, uh, how, what do we say to a merchant who's, who's like really worried about uh, continuing to dig into their own margins to come up with exclusive offers and exclusive coupons and m bigger and better discounts? Let, let me handle that real quick. And then we'll, uh, so I think it is a question of not thinking site-wide, not thinking their entire, about their entire store and, and doing a one big fell swoop discount off of, every, of everything. I like that. And, and just, you know, they obviously sell hundreds of thousands or, or, or millions of, of things, and, and, and there's different margins across the board. So it's just a question of identifying something where they're a little more comfortable this year, pushing, you know, discounting aggressively or... or yeah. uh, and, and we're finding that there's, there is always that. And, and you know, when, when we get pushback from someone saying, listen, I'm sorry, we just can't do the stuff that we were doing last year, then the, the, ne the next step is, okay, let's find, some th let's find something within what you guys sell that, that works and, and, um, and that, is, you know, that remains compelling and aggressive for the consumer. Mm -hmm. And there usually is some, you know, s s something there that, that, that we can both settle on that works. So I think, I think it's just a question of digging a little deeper going forward and, and um, you know so far we, we you know we, we've 
done a good, you know, uh, both Brad Zeals and, and retailers that we work with have, have, you know, haven't really been too uh, sort of stunted by, by that. We've just had to think a little harder. So. Well, well, the the good news is 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 that in a down economy, more consumers are looking for more deals. Right. You know, so the volume is there. I mean, even luxury shoppers want a deal these days, and uh, so that's the good side of it. So you know, the the hard part, the challenge is, is finding that. So um, so what I really like the idea of instead of saying something like you know, 15% off everything, free shipping off everything. You pick what really is going to be a hot item that there's a bigger margin on and getting real specific with the deal. I like that. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Thanks. Any other questions on the economy, sir? John Gilbert, with John, affiliate program advice. Just following on from the previous question, in a declining economy when we're all facing an uncertain future, retailers are very, very concerned, obviously, about their margins. And the problem that is apparent with, uh, with coupon codes in particular is that it does in some way affect incremental sales to the retailer. So my question really is, what value does a coupon affiliate bring to affiliate marketing? And how does this affect against, for instance, true content affiliates who rely on their creativity and productivity to bring information to the consumer about their individual products that they are promoting. Isn't it the case that a coupon affiliate is a lazy affiliate in comparison to the rest <coughs> of the affiliate industry? Can I answer that? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I know. I, I'm I know not going to guess what your position is. I, 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 I love the tough question, by the way. We'll, 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 I'll, I'll give you that one. I think, I think it's a great question. And, and before Linda and, and Brad and Chris and Gary, whoever wants to jump in, um, I will say, sir, that, that we get that question a lot from our advertisers. And it's a concern of, of not all of them, but many of them. And I know our, our team sometimes is, 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 uh, has to has to try to articulate, as they're about to, a response. I, I want to jump in first, because I, I know you'll have some very specific things, since it, it, you know, it was slamming you a little bit. And I work with advertisers and with publishers, so, so I want to offer uh, that viewpoint first. Um, the one thing that I wanted to say is what's going to become increasingly important in 2009 for uh, companies uh, that are primarily affiliates is new customer acquisition. So one of the most important things that these companies can in fact do is deliver new customers. That's what I uh, feel that uh, affiliates are going to have to do a better job at being able to uh, metric size, or what's the word I'm looking for, be able to provide metrics around the new customers. Um, as a management company, we're adding a line to our weekly reporting for every single client that has to do with um, what percentage of the sales were new customer acquisition, because just about every retailer is willing to to give a big discount. I mean, that's been done since the beginning of time. That you know, that that big deal to get someone in the door. If uh, if essentially they can get a new customer out of it and then relate to that customer over time. You know, Brad's happy. He's got his commission. The consumer's happy. They got a nice deal. And then the advertiser's happy because they've got a lifetime uh, customer. So that's a super important thing. But you're also right about the, the lazy aspect, and I want to just say one thing about that. I think this is a year for the coupon sites and deal sites to become a little more innovative around content. So in addition to the deals and the discounts, you know, uh, I think some of the innovations that I would like to see and that I think will work is more testimonials, a little bit more product description, <coughs> a little bit more information about why the products are good. So rather than just a straight feed, data feed of all the coupons this week, um, you know, a little bit more effort being made to provide uh, consumer information that helps the consumer make a decision based on con uh, content. Uh, advertisers will love that, and I think affiliates will do better as a result. So I just wanted to throw those two items in. So Brad's Deals is, is not really a coupon site, for one. If, you, if you're going to parse those two, you know, the, the two things that you just described, sort of creative content-based site or a coupon site, we're certainly... Uh, more of a content-based site, but um, as far as you know, so so I, I I hear what you're saying, and 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 it's it is important to not be a, a lazy coupon site. Um, I think if at the same time, I think that a lot of um, the sites that I used to see that were sort of lazy coupon sites, they really aren't around anymore. 
and the the coupon sites that you probably think of who that that are around are are doing very innovative you know interesting stuff even though at, at the end of the day maybe their site is sort of a list of coupons they're they're, they're still doing very uh useful worthwhile things to draw traffic to them and then draw traffic to you and and it's you know i i think we're a little far you know i i i think that we're a little past that you know past that point at least to a degree um you know, another thing, even if you're dealing with a coupon site and, and you're hesitant to and you don't really understand why and you're concerned about new customers and that kind of thing, the, you know, the automatic thing you should do is set up a coupon that's only for new customers because mm -hmm. um, then that site is doing exactly what you want, whether or not you think they're being lazy or, 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 or not. Um, and there's always a solution. I mean, there's always a way around whatever the concern is. And you know if, if 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 you know if you take issue with the coupon site just sort of being static and lazy and, and whatever you may think then then just figure out something that, that still works for for you and and lets you deal with them. Um, there, there's always something there in my opinion. So, Can I add something real quick. Absolutely. Uh, even though the question isn't directed to mobile marketing, we're seeing some of those same kind of questions in the space because a lot of the companies that are doing mobile marketing in the United States today are doing text message, push marketing, um, you know, how many people can I drive in the store, what kind of discount can I create, how do I get people opted in. And what we find is that if you can create the content in a way that attracts the customer through, a, through an experience and then drive the discount through that content experience, you're creating a great customer loyalty, you're creating great brand loyalty. Um, and at the end of the day, what that comes down to for us is really not dropping technology off at the doorstep for, for our customers uh, or for retailers in general, but actually create, g giving a marketing team and giving a support team and going in and, and, and helping uh, these merchants figure out how to get the best return on, um, on their technology marketing efforts. In some situations, it might be through content. In some situations, it might be through driving discounts and some it's a, it's a hybrid of the two, but it comes down to really marketing support and getting your marketing teams entrenched with, uh, with your retailers' marketing teams to come up with the best solution. Excellent. If I could add something real quick, I love the question, first of all, and uh, the second point, um, in my opinion, a lazy affiliate is a dead affiliate because you'll be outperformed by a workaholic affiliate that'll come in and do the right thing and make the merchant happy. Yeah. Good point. Um, I'm going to transition. Um, you know, just by a show of hands, how many uh, affiliates, pure affiliates, are in the room right now? Um, how about advertisers? A smaller amount, and and then just just agencies and networks. Oh, quite a few. Um, I'm, you know, it, it comes down to you know, wh where where are affiliates going to make money? Is really my my next question for the panel in 2009, but you know, wh what are the growth opportunities? Um, um, I, well, I'm going to start this question uh, with Gary. Uh, one of the reasons I brought Gary, uh, or I invited Gary, and, 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 and he uh, accepted was um, Gary has a belief, which I tend to agree with, that mobile marketing might be the next big thing for affiliates and advertisers. Um, so uh, let's start with that, mobile marketing. Gary, what, how, how could affiliates and advertisers benefit from mobile marketing in 2009? Well, it's, it's a new channel. Uh, it's been around for a little while in the United States, but it's really still a bit been for primarily in its test phase. You know, what works uh, for advertisers, what, what works for affiliates, even, you know, even though there might be only a small amount of affiliates that are using it today. What we see as the opportunity for affiliate, for affiliate marketing as it relates to mobile is really bridging online and offline marketing for affiliates for the first time. So for example, uh, you know, we've been involved with developing a technology that allows affiliate marketers to post, you know, creatives on, on, on their published websites that allow consumers to opt in via their mobile phone on the PC to get things delivered to them on their cell phone. And what that does for affiliates, we think for the first time, which is very compelling, is it gives an affiliate marketer the ability to earn a commission whether or not their consumer buys online or buys in the store. By, mobile has an interesting capability which allows it to track at the point of sale you know, in, in brick and mortar. So if you deliver unique identifier code coupons to your consumers or any type of, um, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a coupon to your point back there. It could be just, hey, the new spring lines out coming to the store, what have you. But um, if you're delivering a unique identifier code, maybe an online one and an in-store one, uh, you have the ability now for affiliates to make commission 
in the store. The other thing, uh, back to your, your original question, is from a, a new customer acquisition standpoint, uh, this, this technology that we're developing is giving retailers the ability to acquire mobile opt-ins and mobile consumers via affiliate sites. Mobile is a, you know, it's a tough medium because there's not a magic pill. You can't say, I want to be in mobile marketing, I want to have a database of people to be able to market to immediately. Um, it's much different than online marketing in that the wireless carriers uh, in the United States predominantly have very strict rules and regulations as it relates to how can I touch my consumer you know, with the device that sits on them at all time. It's a very strict opt-in process, it's a very, very monitored opt-out process. Um, but we, you know, we think that you know, in 2009, affiliates have the opportunity to do some de technology delivery and earn commissions through uh, bridging you know, online through mobile for click-to-call features, bridging online through mobile for software and application downloads to the mobile phone. And this, this leader, this acquisition model that retailers will pay out affiliates commission for by driving things to the cell phone, we feel is going to help bridge that gap. Are you talking more about um, like the SMS, like text messaging, or, or are you talking more broadly about using the browser and the search, the search bar on, on, on mobile devices? We think in the beginning it's about keeping it simple. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have a mass to be able to market to as a retailer, you're hoping somebody comes and finds your site on the PC and on the mobile phone. If they don't know that you have that site, they're not going to be able to go and find it. And in mobile, a lot of consumers don't know that retailers have sites. So we look at building these lists through, you know, one way is through affiliate marketers um, and driving to these, let's call them opt-in databases of text messaging consumers, and then putting links in those text messages to drive consumers to the mobile websites. So, you know, it's a push and pull uh, strategy, we think that works. How do, how do affiliates get paid? Um, they can get paid by getting opt-ins. So if a, you know, one of the hard things, again, going back is it's not a magic pill. I have to build this thing and it takes time to build a database in mobile. So as a retailer, if I can get an affiliate to post banner creatives on their website that draw in mobile opt-ins uh, directly in the banner through a creative field that allows a consumer to opt in their mobile phone, or if I'm just using it as a branding effort that I can get paid on as an affiliate for getting opt-ins. If you think about acquisition for email leads, um, you know, there's still companies out there that are paying, you know, a dollar or more for email capture. Mobile capture is much more valuable than email capture. You're talking about a 99% open rate for text message marketing. Uh, the consumers that are giving you... Just say 99% open nine, rate. 99%. Wow. What's email? Anyone? What's, what's the email open rates? 10 to 20 percent on, on, on a good day. Yeah. yeah, on a good day. Yeah, I don't know. So I mean, if you, you know, that sounds like a ridiculously high number, but how many text messages, let's just say, for example, have you deleted without looking at? Maybe one percent. None. none. <laughs> um, so you know. What about the what about the uh, the costs? Are they similar to lead gen costs for text messaging, or is it a little less, a little I'm, more? I'm glad that you just reminded me. I lost my spot there. That's okay. Um, we think that the value that that an affiliate can make from a commission basis with generating mobile customer acquisition for retailers could be three to five times that what they're getting for email capture. Hmm. Again, you're talking 99% open rates, conversion rates. Uh, we've seen in a lot of our case studies for our customers well above 20% um, for actually driving consumers to a brick and mortar store, online is even a little bit higher because they don't need to leave their house. Um, but when you're driving that kind of conversion, you can get paid a little bit more for, for acquisition. Um, so we're trying to get the retailers to pay affiliates uh, for helping them get those new customers. Cool. I had one more question. Um, sure. um, do advertisers need to build new sites that appear better in the browsers? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> obviously everyone knows in this room you know, we probably have 100 different mobile devices. And it's much tougher to create mobile websites than it is to create a PC website. Um, you have different browser sizes. You have different networks in the United States from a, from a speed perspective. And you have different screen resolutions. Um, so you want to be working with a provider that has a platform that could sniff out what type of device your consumer has and what type of screen resolution it has. Has a platform that can dynamically allocate to that resolution on the fly. So sniff out the kind of device, the kind of resolution, deliver the proper screen size and resolution, and keep it simple. Because again, you're talking about a couple inches. Um, you want to get your main point across as fast as possible. You want your consumer to be able to reach that, have a good experience, um, and you want to have a platform that dynamically allocates for you. And, and you build those too? 
Yes. <laughs> So I'm not going to sell, but I'll let her go for it. <laughs> so if I understand it correctly, because I think this is a big opportunity for affiliates in 2009 once this takes off. So the affiliate um, has the ability to monetize the actual mobile, mobile capture, correct? And you're saying that it could be several times that of a, an email capture. And, and over time, we'll prove that out. Um, as we track, you know, the nice part of being, about being able to integrate into point of sale both on and offline is that we're able to track uh, conversion. And as we take those case studies, um, and if you're working with a mobile marketing company that tracks and has campaign management and reports dollar for dollar on what returns are, we could take a look at those case studies over time. And if we're seeing that those conversions are truly higher over time, year over year over year, it's gonna, it, it may even allow us to get 10 times as much um, than we're getting for email today. Hey, Gary, um, you know, if, if you're able to, could you maybe speak to an example of one of the most effective campaigns that you've seen as far as, say, getting someone from, uh, you know, sending someone a message on the mobile device and getting them to a retail store, for example? One of the best and, ones, exactly, sure. You know, how it sure. worked and what. Definitely, and, and, and this goes back to the gentleman's question back there as well, is how do I, how do I create content and drive experience and discounts all at the same time? Uh, we were working with a, a large national U.S. retailer, 1,000 thousand stores in the U.S. They were entering Canada for the first time, had no brand recognition, uh, needed to make a splash in, in the market, um, but didn't know how to do it. And they, they found us, and, you know, there was about eight weeks before their launch. Um, so, again, our marketing team worked with their marketing team to find out how can we get this technology to work for us. Um, and we strategized with them and found out that, you know, an opening weekend, they were opening 10 stores in Canada at malls. And then when you build a retail store, you have a barricade in front of it for two to three months as you're designing the internal guts of the store. So our marketing team came up with an idea, let's use that frontage to advertise the content of the mobile marketing program. So, you know, as, as the foot traffic walked by on the weekend, um, there was a sign that says, you want to know, learn, learn more about XYZ company and, and new store openings text join to this company's short code, for example, um, and receive a great um, gift on opening weekend. So what we did over a mo one month period was send reminders out, grand opening in three weeks. You know, that was a soft message. Grand opening in two weeks, an XYZ artist is gonna be there um, at your local event, and you could localize with mobile marketing as well. Then a week before, uh, grand opening next weekend, and the day before, come in and get your free gift. Uh, we drove a 28% uh, conversion rate on opening day weekend. Um, 28% of the people that we sent a text message who actually came into the store, got their free gift, and we returned about 10 times uh, the investment, um, you know, with additional sales that day. I heard Gary share the story at another wow. conference, and the cool thing about this, he just gave an offline example, billboard or, or something that says text so-and-so. We see it. I mean, you see it on, on, on realtor signs these days, text so-and-so and, and discounts. Imagine, um, you know, Gary's company and the technology hopefully which we'll be integrating into, into networks, affiliate networks in 2009. Um, I don't know, uh, Gary's probably not in a position to make any announcements yet, but he probably will be soon. Um, but imagine that same scenario where in an affiliate network, they reach out to their publisher base and say, we have an advertiser that wants to accomplish X and give it a shot. And so your goal as a publisher is to go out and, and try to build as much um, interest and in, through the opt-in process that Gary explained um, to help this retailer accomplish whatever it is they want to accomplish. A new store opening, um, a new website launching, um, a, a, a one-day promotion, a weekend promotion. I just, I just think it's a, almost unlimited opportunity. I hope it happens in 2009 and not 2010. One of my concerns is, you know, has the, has the ship sort of left the port? Uh, in mobile marketing uh, yet, um, uh, or is it still sitting there and we're still a year away? Because we've been talking about mobile marketing for several years, but in listening to Gary and, and working with Gary over the last two years, I think that these guys have it right. And I, I think that, that, that he's going to bridge the gap by bringing it to affiliate marketing first um, versus us just talking about it and pontificating that you know, in a couple of years, mobile marketing is going to be the next big thing. Can I answer that question real quick Sure. about when is mobile marketing? I, and, and we do get that question all the time, especially with internet marketers. We, it really depends on what you're talking about. There's, there's many different ways to do mobile marketing. You have mobile web browsing, you have you know, a CPC and CPM models on mobile browsers, you have text messaging, uh, you have premium messaging through, through ringtones and downloads and what have you. Uh, we think that the text messaging side of mobile marketing is really starting to approach critical mass. 
Um, and, and, and that is the hard work that, that, that advertisers have put in over the last two years to build those databases so that they can take those databases and now monetize them to drive people in store, to drive people to their mobile websites, to drive people uh, back to the Internet. Uh, we look at 2009 as the year where website development and mobile applications, we've seen tens and thousands of them come out with the iPhone in the last six months, uh, is the year for, for, for web browsing, web development, and, and, um, and you know, specific mobile applications. But the second half of 2009 is really starting to drive mobile commerce, which will be the next real uh, monetization channel for affiliates to take everything that you've done on PC and really just uh, shift that into the mobile world. That's awesome. You know, there's a lot, lot, lot of new things going on in affiliate marketing, and I, wanna, I don't want to spend it all on mobile. I mean, it seems like there's been uh, just a, a huge increase in the amount of affiliates using social networks like Twitter, um, Facebook, MySpace decided to launch their own ad platforms. Um, there's a lot that happened towards the end, you know, in 2008 that may have or may not have set up affiliates in 2009. Uh, Chris, um, you know, what are your thoughts? There's, you know, uh, what, what, are, what are some opportunities in 2009 um, for, for affiliate marketers? Uh, I think 2009 is full of opportunity for uh, affiliate marketers. I think, um, I mean, a few of the areas we're, uh, we're focusing on are, are, are a lot of the social media platforms. Obviously, we've had huge success with MySpace ads. Um, and before that, Facebook ads um, actually done a little better with MySpace um, and like their platform a little better. Twitter. Um, what areas? What in, in what 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 broad categories did you do well with there? Uh, we did a lot of, of lead gen um, through MySpace. Finance, and, dating. Uh, we messed around with a bunch of different categories. <laughs> I'm not going to go too far into it. Um, dating is, is hugely never, saturated. They never tell. Dating is hugely saturated, um, and, yeah. and obviously maybe 2009 isn't the best uh, the best year for for finance leads, uh, or, or at least traditional finance leads. There's a lot of stuff going on to help people that are in financial trouble, and there's a huge lead market for that. And certainly, if you're wasting time on MySpace, you might be in some financial trouble and need a program like that. Uh, I mean, there's just, everywhere I look, there's opportunity. Twitter is a huge space that I really haven't figured out how to monetize personally yet, but I see a lot of people out there having just a ton of success. Um, and it's certainly a great way for, uh, for retailers to contact their, their, uh, their customers and keep, keep in touch with them and do customer support and everything like that that helps affiliate marketing. And uh, I mean, everywhere I look, I see opportunity in 2009. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Brad, what do you what do you think? Um, just broadly, not necessarily on anything I mentioned, but what do you think are the big opportunities for growth in affiliate marketing in two thousand nine? I I think you know just speaking for us, I I think that a lot more consumers are going to be paying attention to a lot of the resources that affiliates have have developed and put out there. I, I don't I don't think that should be underestimated in the least. Um, I I think that the harder times get, be it in retail or finance or even dating, the the more a consumer is likely to turn to, uh, you know, a, a resource other than say go, walking directly into a store and buying something, or going walking into their bank and doing what their bank tells them. So the, the more that I, I think you're exactly right. I think we all have have a big opportunity to continue to develop resources that are compelling and interesting and useful to consumers. And, and the harder times get, the more of them will be paying attention to those. And I, you know, I think that's here to stay for you know, for, for probably for a few years. Uh, I have uh, two things that I think are going to be really big in 2009: social media and social media marketing and video marketing. And, and here's how I see it kind of playing out, um, especially in a down economy. Economy, but in general, people are really uh, in. Consumers are listening much more to their friends and to other people who have tried the product to buy things. That's going to become more important this year as people are really being careful with what they spend money on. So social media provides a platform for that. And I believe that the, the, the merging of the two is going, is going to really happen. So I think advertisers need to be able to create social media platforms that allow consumers to talk about their products, affiliate sites, especially larger ones like yours, creating their own social platforms to talk about different stuff is going to be uh, really a great way to go. Now, what will shift and bring more value, I believe, is in 
entering the conversation with the consumers. This isn't going to be about you know, having social platforms where all you're doing is pushing offers. People don't want that. It would be like going to a cocktail party wearing a, a sandwich board saying, you know, buy from Joe's hamburgers. I mean, no one would talk to you. So it's a kind of a similar thing in a social media space. How can I create a two-way communication with people who are interested in my brand uh, that offers value? And then they're going to become more interested, then they're going to become more loyal, then they're going to talk about you. And it's a little bit more of a, uh, you know, uh, a, a less statistic-oriented process. But I believe companies that don't allow a place for, for consumers to talk about this, the uh, brand in a non-moderated way are going to be the losers this year. So both merchants and advertisers have an opportunity there. Uh, video, real quickly. Uh, we all uh, talked about video. I'm sh uh, Chris and I had a long conversation on my radio show at the beginning of last year. It's going to be all about video. I talked to uh, Jonathan Stefanski of Koof. Is, is he in the audience here? I don't know. Uh, great video platform. We talked about it earlier this year. This is the year. This is the year for video. I didn't see affiliates or merchants adopting video as aggressively as I think there is opportunity for. I would really like to see uh, the effort being put in by advertisers to create good video content. And even more, I would like to see more effort being put in by, ad, uh, by affiliates to create spaces on their site for video content. Uh, and it's completely possible to track video content now to a commission. Um, advertisers are more than willing to do that if they feel that there's going to be adoption by affiliates. So it's a little bit right now of advertisers waiting to see if affiliates are going to adopt and affiliates looking around for good content and being just a little bit shy about changing the whole look and feel of their site to include snippets of video. So I think both sides need to see the value here because consumers already get it. Otherwise, you wouldn't see the magnificent and unbelievable success of companies like YouTube and all the other video servers. It is clear that consumers and visitors to the internet look at video. So if we're going to reach those consumers, both sides of the table have got to figure out what's going to work for them. Those are the two big things I see. Excellent. Um, let's open it up to the audience. There is a microphone right back here just for the benefit of everyone so that everyone could hear, hear your question. Um, unless you have a, lo a loud voice that's going to project through this place, that's fine. Um, sir? Um, I, I think with uh, w I couldn't see who asked it there. Oh, thanks. Um, I think with video, what's cool is um, you have a little more time to actually display your product. So what I would really like to see is companies that show how a product is being used. Uh, we're going to hear a keynote speaker tomorrow. Gary Vaynerchuk um, uh, is going to did a lot of this with wine, but it can be done for any uh, product. Also, uh, because YouTube has created a sort of a uh, an acceptance of video that isn't exactly uh, network TV quality, you don't have to go to a great deal of trouble. In fact, some people who are doing it uh, successfully are essentially having a voiceover with video just on a product, and they're just talking about, here is our um, cute new um, baby item that is so good for babies because it does this and that and it comes in four colors and you should and here's the colors and you know if you click here you 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 receive a 10% discount on your order i mean it doesn't have to be fancy at all to to be able to just capture them and it can be very short as well so there's good conversions on that so i think that's what's making advertisers a little scared is they're like oh my god video that might be a $20,000 shoot. No, get somebody in your me marketing department with a good three or $400 camera and some top audio and show off the product. Don't be scared to try it. So that's what I think. And, and then uh, the other thing, too, is we got some feedback earlier last year that the sizes of videos were a little too large for most affiliates to really want to put on their page because it would dominate the whole site a little bit more than they would like. So now there is smaller video content that I think could be put in left or right navigation and, and kind of look att attractive on, on many affiliates' layouts. But they may have to change their layout a little bit to adapt to video as well. Does that answer your question? 
Another question? This is uh, kind of for all of you. Let's it kind of piggybacks off of the other gentleman's question. I'm not accusing anybody of being lazy or kind. Of, let's just visualize that you are a newbie per se. But all the change is going on rapidly. Which which path would each one of you take? As a new affiliate, is that what as you're saying? A new, let's say as a new affiliate, you're coming in, you see all the confusion. In other words, I see four different perspectives. All right. So in other words, my my situation. This is a true situation. Uh, without it confusing me even more, visualize you, Chris, being a super affiliate right now, which path would you take if you were in my shoes? Uh, as a new affiliate, I mean, it depends a lot on, you know, how much money you're ready to, you know, invest into your new business venture. Say 20000 like If you had $20,000, I mean, uh, I think that's, you know, A, too much. Uh, and, and, and B, I think you could do anything you wanted at that point. And, and with a budget like that, I would look immediately into just testing things. And it really depends on what, you know, you... For me, at least, I, I, I can't speak to anyone else. But for me, it's what I'm interested in. You know, I, I usually go after, you know, a niche that I, I enjoy spending time on and, and enjoy sharing, you know, my enthusiasm for it with other right. people, which is, en ends up being infectious and ends up generating sales. And so through that, it's just you know experimenting with different medium mediums of uh, promotion, whether that be uh, you know media buys on social platforms like we were talking about Facebook and MySpace or traditional media buys like. Uh, I say traditional, but I mean like Google ad, uh, AdWords and, and things like that, playing with uh, pay-per-click stuff like that. I, I don't do a lot of that myself, but organic SEO certainly is a, is a low-budget way to go, just creating good content that people want to read and then, and then figuring out products to sell alongside that. Well, that's what I meant, the free content. In other words, it's, uh, let's even scale back the budget, say 5000 because I really don't want to overstart. In other words, I don't want to, I don't want to freely spend that money and get lazy myself. In other words, I don't want to be experimenting. Sure, what, yeah. What, what path would you take if you were basically brand new, limited funds? I mean, you've got to have some money. It's not going to start off free. I'll throw one out there. I would go immediately with eBay's affiliate program through Pepper Jam. A, okay. you get paid more through Pepper Jam than if, you go through, uh, than if you go through EPN, which is eBay Partner Network. And they give you a ton of free content through their API. You can mine their API with a little bit of know-how or spend your 5000 on a programmer with some know-how and create a few niche programs. Uh, sites and create some content around that and and sell products on eBay I mean you can sell anything on eBay it's right. the great part about their program is is uh, you can figure out any niche and you can sell any kind of product and they have landing pages for it and they have products ready ready to sell for it and I, I would jump immediately into that well that's the reason I asked that question because like it's kind of piggybacking off of his because it's like with Brad's all right in other words I've looked at this the last two weeks it seems like there's a proliferation of coupon sites all of a sudden it's kind of like dating sites now. Do, do, you, do I waste my time getting into that? Doesn't make sense. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, maybe you can outperform the guys that are in the space, and, and, and maybe you can find something that they're not into. I mean, you know, like Brad said, I guess his site's not really a coupon site. He does a lot of content site, and people find value in that. Uh, but, you know, people find value in coupon sites. You know, people find value in a good deal, and if you can, you know, figure out some way to get your deals to people faster or get better deals, then you'll make money. You know, to piggyback on one thing that Chris just said, I, uh, it, I think it's so important to find something that, that you're specifically well suited for and enjoy doing, and, and that comes through. And I, I didn't really realize that. I've sort of, I sort of fell into that without knowing it, but I think that's been a, a huge advantage that I've sort of secretly had, is that I, I, I love what I do. I mean, I love finding deals. I, I love telling people about them. So that's, you know, and that's probably why what I've done has worked. And, and, and pro it's probably why I've worked so hard at it and, and, and love it. And, and I think that's I think that show you know comes through the sort of the final product. So don't don't under uh, don't underestimate that by any means. I mean, even if you're going to do, you know, the eBay example that he used, maybe find a niche that you can lend some specific expertise or knowledge to, because I think that'll show through in what you end up doing on you know on the on the consumer side of it. I'd like to jump in here on that too. Um, in agreement with these guys, you've got to find something that you're really per personally interested in because you're going to spend a lot of time with. But I have three words for you. Content, content, content. Um, advertisers that we work with are always looking for niche-oriented sites that have relevant content to what their products are. They find those to be the single most valuable type of uh, affiliate they have. 
Now, coupon sites and loyalty sites generally drive the most amount of volume to their sites, but in terms of the quality of the customers that they're receiving, it's coming from the niche-oriented relevancy sites. So what I would do with your money is, A, I would have a blog platform that had a uh, shopping cart with it. I would be blogging the heck out of whatever product or area that you decide, gardening, uh, model airplanes, whatever it is that you pick, blog a lot. There's two reasons for it. One, it's relevant content. Two, Google loves blogs. They will pick up that uh, in an organic ser search very, very quickly. So you'll be moving up to the top, sometimes ahead of these guys in the coupon space that are very good at what they do. So you want to blog about it. You want to write good stuff about it. You can even get uh, free samples from all sorts of uh, retailers. If you're going to blog about it, then you put their links in the blog or ads in the blog and talk about it and be authentic about it, you know? And then test what's doing better and start a number of different uh, sites. I would not do too many at once, but three or four. Uh, use your money to pay people who write for you, write a lot of good stuff. Write, write, write. Lots of content, it's not easy, it's not overnight, and as far as the uh, the coupon sites go, um, I, I like that Chris was actually giving you some encouragement there, but to be frank, if I was a new affiliate, I wouldn't be competing with these guys, honestly. I mean, they all do it really well and have for years. So I would do what uh, some of them aren't doing, which is creating a ton of really great and relevant content. Uh, for consumers, and blogging is a super way to do it, and um, uh, that's that's what my recommendation would be. Then you'll be really valuable to the advertiser as well. I'm going to take another question. One other thing that wasn't mentioned, and I know Chris is an expert on it, is, uh, and you have a, a nice little budget to start with, is actually acquiring uh, an existing website. Mm -hmm. Two of my friends, Dave Adams and Lee Dodd, um, have built uh, a multi-million dollar business um, uh, probably never building their own website. What they do is they acquire other high traffic websites. Um, so they already have a good starting point. You go to somewhere like SitePoint, uh, among others, that, that you know, have uh, you know, a whole sort of auction system where you could go ahead and bid on, on existing websites that already have page rank, that already have links coming into them, that already have content, and you take those sites and, and monetize them further. Yes, uh, Linda, Google does love blogs, and Google loves videos on blogs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things I wanted to ask you, in, in, it's just, this is just my opinion, but I find that merchants and affiliates both, uh, part of the reason they're pulling back a little bit from videos, even though they're mesmerized by them, they know they need to get involved with them, is the legal environment. I don't care what sales and marketing strategy or tactic you utilize, astute marketers understand there's constraints. And we're just starting to navigate the legal environment relative to video marketing. You've got FTC issues, security issues, uh, product claims uh, being made that shouldn't be made, um, d disclosures that have to be made on certain types of videos that aren't being made. <clears throat> those types of things. And I was wondering from your perspective, um, are you having clients ask you about that in terms of video marketing? I mean, is, are, I, mean uh, I see a lot of concern about that. Uh, I, but honestly, I was wondering what your perspective was. Honestly, I haven't seen that as a ma major hurdle. I think most advertisers have legal departments, and uh, and their advertise, you know, whatever they're going to put on video is vetted by their legal department. But by the time that they give it to the affiliate, it's it's already been vetted. I'm not talking about affiliates creating a video about a product. That's probably the first thing to get you kicked out of an affiliate program because of exactly what you posted. Yeah, so, so that's, that's uh, probably not going to be a model that's going to survive. Um, I think uh, you can do that, but if you join a program with a, a homemade testimonial video that has anything in it that is offensive or illegal in any way to an advertiser, you'll get a cease and desist quicker than you can say boo. But advertisers going to be should be producing their own content, whether it be very, very simple like I suggested or really high-end, well-made 
made video, then it's already vetted, and you're getting a you're getting a product that is not only well produced, but you're not going to be uh, jumping into any legal problems, and you're going to be earning a commission on it as well. Thank you. One final question. Two final questions. Great, great. Uh, I'm interested in Chris's perspective as well as the other panelists. Um, what type of ar arbitrage opportunities, especially PPC arbitrage opportunities, do you see foresee in 2009? I mean, to be honest, I'm not really. I, I don't do a lot of pay per click other than the social media stuff. I don't. I don't do a lot of uh, ad words and things of that nature. Um, so I can't really speak on that. Maybe Was as well Chris as Chris could. Chris? You're, you're Chris. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's. For those of you that don't know, that's how, when I was a super affiliate back in 1999, 2000, early 2000s, that's how I built you know, my career as an affiliate marketer through uh, search engine marketing, uh, uh, affiliate arbitrage, buying ads on Google AdWords uh, way back in 1999 on GoTo.com and, and, then, and, then, um, and then selling those ads through websites that I had built to my advertiser partners. So. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be brief since I'm not really on the panel, I'm the moderator, you and I could talk in private, but you know, I, I think the, the industry has become a lot more competitive. Um, affiliates bidding on Google, um, it's become more of a challenge because Google has really um, made it uh, difficult uh, from the standpoint of quality score to be able to get um, acceptable prices on a cost per click basis. Um, but uh, it, there are still affiliates that are out there that are extremely large, especially in the lead generation uh, side of the business. Uh, that are driving, you know, extraordinary, um, uh, that have very large Google AdWords budgets, budgets and, 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 and are still, you know, using the same model that I used back in the early day. Find something that works, um, replicate it, and scale it. And, I, and I've been saying that for five or six years, and people have come up to me and said, I finally figured it out, and now I make $20,000 a month, $50,000 a month. The model still works. Um, you just have to, you have to be a little smarter than I was, you know, six years ago. Sir? I'd, I'd do a tad bit of research on foreclosures and loan modifications, if I were you. Final question. Yeah. Uh, I heard some of that, and, uh, and the only one I've had success with. Can you repeat with, it as much as you, you heard it? Wow, that's tough. Um, he was asking about uh, driving traffic, I guess, from Flickr, and what was the other one? Scribed, I heard. I've had great success with Flickr. Um, Flickr does a lot of great traffic, and I know this isn't an SEO panel, but a lot of their areas are do follow. Just if you guys know what that is, then, then you would like that. Um, and we've had a lot of fun driving traffic from Flickr. I haven't really messed with Scribed. Uh, as far as other offline methods of driving traffic, I've had a lot of success with uh, inside of AdWords, Google's radio ad program, which is kind of a different way of driving traffic. But uh, we found some really, really great prices in there. We created an ad, I think, in their marketplace for $100. A very professional sounding, you know, licensed music, all that stuff, and, and gotten actually really, really great plays and a lot of direct traffic uh, from that program. I'd recommend that and, and, and Flickr, but I haven't really messed with the other methods you, you described. Well, uh, if, if you will, a uh, round of applause for our panelists. <laughs> and uh, uh, everybody, uh, hope, hope those of you that lost money uh, turn your luck and uh, have a great affiliate summit. Thank you for attending.